Hi, my name is Rupert Bauersachs. I'm director of vascular medicine at the Klinikum Darmstadt in Germany. Well, the background that we have in patients with peripheral arterial disease is that um, we know now that after those patients undergo lower extremity revascularization, they have a very high risk to develop acute limb ischemia ALI. And, and this is not the end of the story, but subsequent, they develop more complications and especially limb complications. And unfortunately, until now, there hadn't been any large prospective randomized trial to look on how to improve that outcome. So Voyager PAD was a randomized controlled double blind trial comparing rivaroxaban 2.5 milligram twice daily with placebo in 6,564 patients with symptomatic PAD that had undergone uh, infrainguinal lower extremity revascularization within the last 10 days. Clopidogrel was allowed according to the investigator's discretion, up to six months. And the present analysis looked not only at first events, but this analysis looked at the totality of vascular events, including the primary endpoint, which was a composite of major adverse limb event, um, was a composite of acute limb ischemia, amputation of a major cause, um, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, and cardiovascular death. And it added the need for a low extremity revascularization and also for venous thromboembolism. So the patient population that was studied in Voyager PAD um, was the typical population of patients with peripheral arterial disease. So they had a high percentage of high, hypertension, uh, of more than 80%, they have hypercholesterolemia in about 60%. Unfortunately, and that's also typical, more than 30% of the patients were still smoking. Uh, a fifth of the patients had impaired renal function. And of course, about one third had coronary artery disease. And the majority were well treated with the best medical background treatment. 80% um, had uh, a statin. Um, more than 60% had ARBs, and more than 50% of the patients also received clopidogrel right after the intervention or the surgery, and that was at the discretion of the investigator. It is interesting to compare the baseline characteristics of those patients that had no vascular event during the study to those patients that uh, had one event or that had multiple events. So those 4,263 patients that had no event differed in those with multiple events, that those with multiple events had more underlying comorbidities. Um, also, they had undergone more complex revascularizations and those with multiple events were less likely to be randomized to rivaroxaban and they received clopidogrel in a higher percentage. I think a key message from the Voyager PAD study is that the event rate in the placebo group was very high after three years. It was 19.9% uh, of the primary endpoint. Um, so this is a very high rate that occurred on top of best medical background treatment. But if we now look at total events, including lower extremity revascularization and venous thromboembolism, we find that the event rate is even higher. So more than a third of the patients suffered at least one of those events within the three years. And the event rate was 88% um, within three years. So 88.4 uh, events occurred in 100 patients with placebo as compared to uh, 75.9 events per 100 patients 
receiving rivaroxaban. Rivaroxaban not only reduced the first event, but also the second, the third, and so on event with a total reduction of 342 events. Now, if we would have looked only at the first event, we would have missed really more than 80% of the benefit. So we observed a very high event rate of 88.4 per 100 patients in three years in the placebo group and 75.9 events per 100 patients in the rivaroxaban group. So a very high event rate and more than a third of the patients suffered from one limb event. And so it is very important to not only look at the first event, but also at total events, what we did in that analysis. And it is clear that we have to do anything which is possible to reduce that high complication rate in PAD patients undergoing lower extremity revascularization. And it's also important that in this, slide, in this trial and in future trials, we not only look at MACE events, but also limb events in PAD patients. Rivaroxaban should be used um, as an uh, uh, adjunctive treatment in patients undergoing low extremity revascularization to improve that high complication rate. I think it is important that in the future we perform trials in this highly vulnerable population with PAD, especially after lower extremity revascularization, and that we also look at limb events and not only MACE events, uh, and try everything to reduce the total burden of disease in those patients.